This week on Us Weekly Style Files, we're breaking down the fashion from Hollywood's biggest night, the Oscars. Too bad her dress didn't get to shine for her husband stole the spotlight, but Jada, you still looked amazing in that dress. Plus, Julia Fox wore a purse made of real human hair, and Timothy Chalamet rocked women's wear to the big night. We've got that plus so much more on today's Us Weekly Style Files. Hey everyone, Christina Garibaldi here with the always stylish Gwen Flamberg, Us Weekly's beauty and style director, and our entertainment director, Travis Cronin. Welcome to another episode of Us Weekly Style Files. This is going to be a good one. We have to break down everything from the Oscars, and we have a lot to talk about. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, in our in case you missed it, Gwen, what was your hit? What was your miss from the Oscars? There was so much amazing style on the red carpet last night. It's hard for me to say who my top choice was, but I have to give it to Penelope Cruz. She just looked so elegant in that Chanel gown, navy with a uh, diamante bow at the neckline. She just looked regal and incredible. She was nominated for Best Actress for Parallel Mothers. And it just, it did not disappoint. Um, Miss... Maggie Gyllenhaal looked Ugh. again like Scarlett O'Hara, like forgot to take the curtain rod out of the dress. I just don't know. Like it was like, are you the gingerbread man? Like I, I, I it just, it was a huge miss on all fronts. But you know, before I turn the mic over to Trav for his picks, we've got to talk honorable mention. One of the best dressed of the night was Megan Thee Stallion, yes. and I just thought that her look was absolutely the combination of modernity and old school Hollywood glamour. Mm -hmm. She pulled it off like nobody else could. And I was just so thrilled to see her in our top five best dress of the night. And if you guys haven't seen our top five best dress videos, go to usmagazine.com slash stylish, where of course you can see all the looks, all the best beauty, and of course, top five best dress, as well as tons of other exclusive Oscars content. Love it. Try oh my. It's so sad that Maggie Gyllenhaal wore no. that ugly dress because that was Gia Pirelli, who is my favorite new designer out of France. Mm-hmm. Their accessories are the coolest things I've ever seen in my life. Zendaya has worn them so well. And Maggie Gia Gyllenhaal is, a, is, is like a, an iconic designer that just has a, a new person at the helm and they're um, resurrecting it. I, I love the idea of the dress, but not on an Oscars red carpet, man. Oh boy. <laughs> no, it did not look good. Megan the Stallion looks great, but my hit had to be for it. I'm so glad it's for her because she was my miss last week. Jessica Chastain is back in the fashion yeah. gods' good graces with this amazing Gucci gown. It was when you think of ball gown, when you think of Oscars, you think of something show stopping like this, mm-hmm. but it's also bold and fun and risk taking. And the train at the bottom of it was just gorgeous. The jewelry, the really simple ponytail, no extensions, really shiny, gorgeous hair. Everything about this look just screams winner. And she was. So it was fantastic. And go to usmagazine.com slash stylist for her after party outfit, because that was amazing. After party. After party. Her family fair Oscars party look was my favorite look of the whole night. Oh, the The emerald. Shoes. And it just fit her so perfectly. I loved her Gucci gown for the Oscars red carpet, though I thought that she looked like an ethereal mermaid come to life. And it was totally like, yes, she was in the spotlight. She looked like a winner and she was a winner. Definitely. Ariel got her legs and that gorgeous gown (laughs) and it was beautiful. My miss had to be Nicole Kidman. Well, I thought Nicole Kidman looked great from the neck up. Everything was gorgeous. This Armani Privé gown. Uh, She told Laverne Cox on the red carpet that this color was hand selected for her. And I guess it would probably be called dreary day. (laughs) Uh, maybe wintry mix you know chance of rain possibly this color was just the definition of drab incarnate it did nothing to make her gorgeous gorgeous features pop the peplum around the middle it was like would you like a little pouch when you have none sure (laughs) and why not let's make it this dreary color i can't talk enough crap about this dress but the woman (laughs) in it is beautiful 
And another dress that I do think we have to talk about, even though, you know, she jumped over a lot of drama this evening, uh, that evening, Jada Pickett Smith wore this amazing Valentino Hawk Couture green, went on for miles. And when she first hit the carpet, I could only see the sort of top half of it. And then I saw the elegance behind it and just the yards of fabric. It was so cool, so bold. Too bad her dress didn't get to shine for her husband stole the spotlight. But Jada, you still looked amazing in that dress. I love a long sleeve gown. I thought that mm-hmm. she looked super chic. That train is more of like a Met Gala. Yeah. Movement, yeah. But I mean, props. I love the color. I love the style. And I thought that she looked absolutely incredible. And all of it, all of it. Forget the brawl. Just talking about the beauty here. <laughs> yeah. her, her shaved head and her glowing skin. Like she just... She was one of the most beautiful women at the Oscars. So. The really glowing nice. skin. And she sort of had some blonde going on in her balding head, which I thought mm-hmm. made a really beautiful, like golden shimmer to her all over. And she's never really looked better. She looks fantastic. She does. She looks so good. Um, we have to talk also about Zendaya. Never has a miss on the red carpet ever. She was uh, in Valentino with a little, you know, cropped button down with this shimmery, long, uh, beautiful skirt from Valentino. It was kind of giving us some like 90s Sharon Stone vibes. And she looked absolutely stunning. I mean, we say it over and over again. I really don't think she's ever had a miss on a red carpet. Do you agree? Totally agree. I loved that look. I loved this sort of um, possible homage to Sharon Stone. This Oscars was so much about history and throwing Mm -hmm. it back. And it was that iconic Hollywood look that only Zendaya could do with those bodies. And it just fit her perfectly. She knows how to wear clothes. She looks so comfortable on the red carpet and everything she wears. I can't wait to continue to see what Zendaya brings to the red carpet. Yeah, definitely. Seriously, I'm putting posters of her stylist, La Roach, up in my home <laughs> because La Roach has selected everything she's worn from every red carpet since she was 13 years old. Mm-hmm. And he just elevates his game, Luxury Law on Instagram. He's styling a lot of people now. Put his picture up on your wall because he is owning the red carpets too. Yes, definitely. And I wanted to get your opinion on this mess about Kristen Stewart. This got a lot of people talking because this isn't your traditional Oscars um, ensemble. So she's here in Chanel, you know, rocking some shorts. Not I, I don't hate the outfit. I don't hate the ensemble, but it's not really Oscar attire. What do you guys think? I loved the outfit, but yeah. not for Oscars. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. Total miss. One of my best girlfriends texted me and said, wow, she really skanked up the red carpet. I would have worn that outfit to Jet Nightclub back in the 90s. And you know what? I think I did wear an outfit to <laughs> Jet in the 90s. But here's the really amazing thing. Right after she posed for pictures on the red carpet, she took those heels off, love she it. put a pair of loafers on, and she was like, that's it. What I love about Kristen Stewart is that she is unapologetically herself, mm-hmm. who she is. She doesn't feel like she has to conform to Hollywood standards. And quite honestly, she was nominated for an award. You know, like she's... um. Let her more it should be to her own drummer. I just want her to bring that glamour to high red carpet. She has done it before and she's stolen the show. So let's just have the positive talk about your look, not the negative talk. Uh, see, Gwen, I disagree that she's marching to her own beat. When I see this look, I see someone trying so hard to look mm-hmm. like they don't care, to put a lot of effort into saying, I'm not like other girls. I'm, I'm a different, cool girl, or I want to be a director. And this look screams inauthenticity to me because you know you're going to the Oscars. If you want to have your own style, then wear a cool tuxedo, wear something. But it's very Bella Swan wearing the converses with the prom dress, thinking no girl is ever like me because I'm wearing sneakers and she just did that for me again great for daytime nighttime in 1997 but not the Oscars red carpet (laughs) definitely not the Oscars all right well let's talk about some style that made headlines and of course we're sticking with the Oscars but moving it over to the after parties and we need to talk about Julia Fox's look that she wore to the Vanity Fair party so she certainly knows how to make a statement and she did just that Um, but we had to do a double take because she arrived in a black leather gown from Copenhagen based fashion label 
Oh, I don't even want to pronounce it. She couldn't pronounce it either. When they asked her on the red carpet, she said she couldn't pronounce the German last name. I don't even <laughs> want to butcher it, but Han Klobenhavens, I'm going to go with that. Spring right. 2022 collection. The standout detail was its neckline, which was created to look like a human hand wrapped around her neck. But that's not all. She accessorized um, with a clutch made of real human hair. Um, oh, yes, it's crazy. So uh, very, <laughs> very crazy. I like cannot believe she did this. Um, she, so some fans noticed that it seems like she wanted her eyes to look irritated with one commenter saying the fact that she did her eye makeup to resemble the bloodshot red you get from being choked out. So a lot going on here. What do we think about this? The makeup, the bag, the dress, everything. Well, first of all, let me just say that it is not surprising that Julia Fox was trying to be provocative on the red carpet. Mm -hmm. However, that dress, while very interesting and sculptural, didn't fit her. It didn't look good on her. One boob is kind of like practically hanging out. A dress that symbolizes somebody getting choked, that's not just macabre, it's actually um dangerous if she had spoken out or maybe like um decided to donate something to domestic violence charities like maybe there would be something behind wearing that but i just think that that's a message that you shouldn't be spreading i love when pat mcgrath does that crazy what's become a julia fox signature eye look but julia fox is not a skilled makeup artist and it just looked like a mess I hope that she wasn't trying to look like she got choked out because that would be really macabre and just kind of ugly mm -hmm. and dangerous again. But um, I'm just going to say maybe she couldn't really do that makeup and some of that soot got in her eyes and it, and it got bloodshot. The human hair purse, I mean, disgusting. <laughs> That's, you're just looking for something to be provocative and to be written about. Mm -hmm. I mean, she got what she wanted and... Um, you know, she's a notable celebrity right now. So maybe this is what you have to do to be in the spotlight. But I would have liked to have seen her wearing something a little bit prettier. Hmm, you didn't think that was pretty interesting. <laughs> no, it was definitely not pretty. I'm hoping that her bloodshot eyes and the black strangulation hand was sort of like fame has a hold on me and it's sort of, you know, choking me out and I'm losing my inner essence more that like Lady Gaga storyline of the fame that's sort of grappling her and hopefully not an ode to domestic violence or violence against women because that is messed up. And I have a problem with that. Not I wear a lot of extensions, so I have a lot of human hair in bags. So it doesn't bother me as much to see a bag with human hair on it because it's really just close. But I also think that hair was synthetic and I'd like to see it on the flat iron test because I bet that would just fry up in a second. It did not look like human hair. That was synthetic. Stop lying to us, Julia. Put a curling iron on that. I think it would just catch in flames. <laughs> catch in flames. I love it. Um, well, let's talk about Kim Kardashian because she also attended the Vanity Fair um, party. No word if they crossed paths, but she wore a bright blue Balenciaga dress that covered every inch of her skin. She looked absolutely gorgeous. The 40 one year old reality star uh, made sure she got a manicure. Of course, her nail artist uh, took to Instagram and said, best believe these nails were perfectly manicured under these gorgeous Balenciaga blue gloves for Kim Kardashian. As for the rest of her glam, uh, her hairstylist, Chris Stapleton, created a super chic wet ponytail. So um, I love that she brought some color to this. Um, we don't usually see her in these bright, bright colors. So what, did, what do you uh, both think about this look? I totally agree. I mean, if she must insist on doing this Balenciaga fully, you know, feet, hands, everything covered, this color was beautiful. It was cheerful. It made her look gorgeous, offset her skin tone beautifully. Mm -hmm. I loved the wet look hair kind of with a blue kind of pool moment. Chris Appleton can do no wrong. We love him. You know, I I'd like to see like her wrists. I really would. Of course, she talked about how she had perfect a perfect manicure under those gloves. But if you don't see it, it's like a tree in the forest. <laughs> Did it even really happen? <gasps> I just sort of sick of Kim wearing these monochromatic uh, looks like you bought it at the Halloween store mm -hmm. spandex sort of material. I get that she's clearly in an era and it's all Balenciaga, but I've seen it before. It's not that interesting. While this color is one of my favorite colors in the world yeah. and I thought it looked so fun, I, I was wildly unshocked by this look. And that makes me, you know, it's sort of 
outbalances my love for the color was that I was so unsurprised by this look on Kim. Do something different. Right. Yeah. A little different. Well, what do we think about Courtney and Travis? They packed on the PDA on the Oscars red carpet. And of course, at Vanity Fair, they literally cannot keep their hands off each other. Um, a little too much at times. A tongue kiss is not the best accessory on the red carpet, but of course, <laughs> if you expect them to give the photographers anything else. I did think that Courtney looked amazing. I loved her hair also had a bit of a wet look, mm -hmm. center parted, a sharp bob. It looked really sophisticated. I also loved her dress. I thought that she looked super sophisticated. I, of course, love seeing a Kardashian and Terry Mueller. So thanks for that. Her chest looked so awesome. And I got a release that said that she had prepped with that current body LED mm -hmm. neck and duck mask, which nice. Travis, as I talk about it all the time. I yeah. wear it like five days a week. So I feel <laughs> like, you know, Kardashians, they're just like us and I'm just like them. And so, you know, maybe I'm doing something right. But um, those two, I don't know. Keep your tongues out of each other's mouths yeah. for like a second. I love Mugler. I always will. It is such a cool dress. It is great for an mm -hmm. after party. Just he can do no wrong at all. But I sort of disagree. I've seen so many tongue kisses from them on the red carpet that I want more. I want bites. <laughs> I want simulated dry humping. I mean, if you're going to give us this gross 15 year old hormones at the lockers, just give it to me all the way. Don't half step. You know, you know, we've seen it a bunch of times. Just Take it even further. Why not <laughs> take a page out of Julia Fox's book and just give us something really to talk about? Seriously, or a page out of Kim Kardashian's book, right? Yes. Uh, um, all right. Well, let's move on to what is in our beauty bag this week. When what is in your beauty bag? What's a must have for uh, the red carpet? Guys, this is an incredible product that just launched. It's the brand is called Circa 1970, and this is their first product. Um, it's just a facial oil. So it's the Circa 1970 facial oil. This is a brand that was created by two celebrity groomers, male groomers, Amy Komarovsky and Barbara Guillaume. And together, these two groom every guy in Hollywood. I mean, we're talking Adam Driver. We're talking Angus Cloud. Like, absolutely every guy in Hollywood. This is a unisex product. Great for guys. Also great for girls. And the star ingredient is Bakuchiol, which is a natural retinol alternative. It's a vegan retinol alternative. It's very soothing. So basically this oil, it gets rid of redness. It moisturizes, smooths fine lines, and just gives you that overall Hollywood glow. So really it's great for everybody to use in their real life as part of their routine, or of course the perfect sort of start and finish to a red carpet look. Love it. Absolutely love it. All right, well, let's get back to the red carpet and go to our red carpet rewind. And we're looking back at Timothy Chalamet's style evolution. Now he rocked Louis Vuitton's women's wear to this year's Oscar. He bared his chest, got a lot of people talking. Now he has come a very long way in just a few short years of his notoriety. What did we think of his women's wear look? I mean, dead. It killed me when he stepped onto that red carpet. Forget that it was women's wear. He was shirtless. Mm -hmm. And it is very rare to see somebody shirtless on the red carpet. And if it's anybody, it should be him. The fact that it was women's wear, I mean, I have to say, I think that those like gender lines have gotten very fluid with fashion. Sure, he's sort of a slight guy, but Travis, correct me if I'm wrong, your Lon Von short suit that I love was also women's wear, right? And it's not exactly like, you know, you're a slight guy. You're like an average dude. So I feel like everybody should wear mm -hmm. what fits them and what looks great on them. Timothy Chalamet, I think that he started out as like just a kid, as soon as he started hitting red carpets and growing in Hollywood, he is a style guy. He is one to watch. He's kind of along the lines of like Harry Styles or Jared Leto. I can't wait to see him rock suit after suit with like fabulous blouses mm -hmm. or no blouse at all. 
It was so shocking that a guy could show up to the Oscars wearing no shirt under a tuxedo jacket. And we're like, chic, amazing. You look great. We think that would sort of be like a Tommy Lee during the Pamela Anderson time where we're like, you know, actually get dressed. But he looked fantastic. And Gwen's right. When I go into every store forever, I'm walking down both sides of the aisle, the men, the women. It does not matter anymore. You know, that really shows with Harry Styles and Timothy Chalamet because it really doesn't matter. And that's the new up and comers. It doesn't have to be one way to dress as a man or one way to dress as a woman. You can do them both and be really interesting. So props to him. But the, those older pictures were showing of him in the sneakers as he looks like a 12 year old. We're sorry, Timothy, you've come so far. We're so proud of come you. So far, yes. Shorts on the red carpet. He used to rock. And now he's uh, now he's shirtless and he's definitely come a long, long way. Um, <laughs> we'd love to know what everybody thinks. What was your hit to misses from the Oscars? Please let us know in the comments. Travis, Gwen, thank you both so much. It's always so much fun running down all things style with you, as always. Yeah. All right. Totally. Bye.